Just last year, almost every nation in the world committed to lowering carbon emissions in the UN Climate Change Conference in Paris. Here to look at how travel and tourism can meet these goals is Susanna Beckin, Director and Professor of Sustainable Tourism at the Griffith University in Australia. She's joined by Faith Taylor from Wyndham Worldwide and Eric Ricarte, Founder and CEO of Greenview. Susanna? Right, and we heard it multiple times at the summit here in Bangkok, climate change is a priority challenge. And I have with me Faith Taylor from um, uh, Wyndham uh, Worldwide, uh, Senior Vice President for CSR and Sustainability. Yep. Welcome, and Eric Ricard from uh, Greenview, founder and CEO. So how do we make Paris work? Now, the Paris Agreement uh, was signed by 193 countries, and, and collectively we agreed that we do need to limit uh, global warming to two degrees Celsius. Now that's a big task because we already have warmed the planet by one degree. It requires a peaking of global emissions as soon as possible and net zero emissions by 2050. So that's not very really long. Now, Faith, you are a leader in, in, in the hotel industry yeah. and in your recent uh, CSR report for 2016, I saw that the carbon dioxide reductions was 22%. Yep. That's a big reduction. Tell us a little bit how you achieved that and can you keep that momentum going? Absolutely. So the 22% down is from 2010 and there's a three-pronged strategy in terms of how we did that. Number one is energy efficiency, reducing our energy usage at our buildings. That's the foundation. Number two is actually installing reno renewable energy options. So that's everything from solar uh, panels to our properties globally. And number three is actually purchasing carbon offsets. And so that three-pronged strategy is what we've been working towards. And actually, we beat, the tw uh, we're, we're, we're beat that goal six years ahead of time. And so now we've raised our goal to 40% uh, down by 2025. Um, most importantly, we use technology. We have a software system globally that tracks, measures, and report. It's called our Wind and Green Toolbox to actually administer that in over 100 countries with all of our assets. That's how we did it, and we're working towards that overall goal. Um, we also have a part of our, our portfolio, Landle Green Parks, and Landle Green Parks is actually has an expedition zero um, at, in terms of reducing their carbon to zero, and they've demonstrated in our portfolio uh, their electricity is down by 80%. So the, all of those different examples is how we've been moving forward with the agenda, which is a big goal to be down zero by 2050. It is. I mean, I'm, I'm heartened to um, hear the, the zero emission hotel is a possibility for the future. Yes, it is. It's absolutely. And Landle Green Parks is actually on that path so that we can demonstrate within our portfolio how you can get there. And I think it's important in the hotel industry to have those examples of like that so that people can say, okay, that's the path to how we get there. And, it's, and especially today, you need those examples. Absolutely, because one thing, of course, about tourism is the fast growth rate. And, and that is even harder than to reduce emissions at the same time. And, and there's sometimes the accusation that maybe, maybe tourism is getting a free ride and uh, maybe other sectors are cutting deeper. Eric, you've worked um, on carbon and climate change for a long time and across many different subsectors in the tourism and travel industry. Where are the low hanging fruits? Where are the big challenges? That's a great point now, actually, because we're transitioning from low-hanging fruit to the big challenge. Low-hanging fruit right now is efficiency. Efficient engines, efficient buildings, efficient equipment, efficient operations. Um, that's what's, the payback is there, it's, it's going, there's a lot of best practices. Other areas that are low-hanging fruit, vegetarian, vegan menu options, for example. But now, big challenge, moving to renewable energy. The metric of the future is not how much you reduce, but what percent of your energy is renewable. And that metric's you know, got to go to basically 100% by 2050 if we're going to get you know, to decarbonization. And as well, the big challenge is realizing throughout the value chain of travel and tourism, where is it that the big impacts occur that we haven't really figured out or traced or mapped quantifiably yet. So that's going to be the challenge to go forward and see how we do it. Yeah, because 2050 seems like a long time, but if we think of investments, and it's actually not that far off. And how will the travel and tourism industry look like in 2050? Well, okay. you know, it's interesting. This conference, we've talked a lot about what the traveler is going to look like, the diversity, mm -hmm. um, India and China in terms of the consumer and the cultural differences and the number of travelers coming from that part of the world. Mm -hmm. Number two is technology. I really believe that 
technology is changing how we travel, whether it's artificial intelligence, virtual, as well as how we will actually uh, book our travel going forward, mm -hmm. and technology to reduce our footprint. We are not going to get there 2050 with zero emission without technological innovation. Mm -hmm. And three, in my mind, is managing resources. If, if the floods happen like they do, certain locations will no longer be able to travel. So we're going to have to manage natural resources. Yeah. And so for me, 2050 is a different operating model than what we have today. Yeah. 2050, totally different world. <laughs> if you said, what's 2017 going to look like back in 84? Oh. We wouldn't know. So it's going to be crazy. But I think, one, sustainable development, either we achieve it or we don't. Either we put ourselves on a path and then 2050 is an amazing new world, or we're going to have serious problems. I think the biggest challenge, though, is the investments made today in planes and in hotels and buildings, they're going to be around for 10, 20, even 30 years. Exactly. So that's why these next 10 years are so important, because really we have to stop looking at it as a P&L of what's our carbon one year to the next. We have a balance sheet on carbon, and by 2050, we have to make progress to making that neutral by 2050. Yeah, so here at the Global Summit, we obviously have leaders of the industry. We also have investors and developers yeah. and, um, and many other um, sectors that are represented. So what are the messages and recommendations that you would give to the colleagues who, who watch this? Um, what do we need to do immediately? What, what, what are the actions that are absolutely necessary? Well, leadership is leading by example. So I would challenge everyone to figure out their path to carbon neutrality. I would say focus on those uh, you know, accessible steps today, but also have a strategic long-term goal, like Eric was talking about. How do we get to carbon de uh, decarbonization? But more importantly, um, developing those examples for other companies to see. That's what leadership is about. Yeah, leadership is so important. I mean, really, the first suggestion is it, the message needs to come from CEO and top leadership. This is an issue. This is a business issue. What are we doing? What should be we doing? And why? I mean, that's really the discussion. I think, but two other things. First, there's so much out there already. Partnerships, there's yeah. innovative projects, collaboration among the industry. Join what's already going on. Join the movements. SDGs are a good way to do that as well. So you're not reinventing the wheel. And then finally, Let's drop the cynicism and let's be positive about what we can do toward 2050. Everybody's got that inherent sort of, well, you know, we're dealing with real big changes. But as long as we think, well, what can we do to make a positive change? Translate that to tourism to say, well, if I'm going to travel, how can we make the destination a better place for going there and help actually fund the resilience and the renewable energy infrastructure and leverage the power of tourism across the world? Right. Travel and tourism can be a force for good, but also innovation. Yep. And, and that's why we have the Tourism for Tomorrow votes, yeah. which are so inspiring, and, and hopefully we can yeah. multiply the action. So thank you so much for, you. for your focus.